Hi guys, welcome to Powerhouse OC. We're so happy that you're with us. And we just want to welcome you to join us in worship and in the word as Brother Steve brings the word. Um, we want to ask also that you go ahead and feel free to share this post. Tag your friends, your family, so that they can be blessed as well. Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and worship together. Um, feel free to just let the Spirit of God move in your home. We want to welcome the Holy Spirit um, into, into your homes where you're at. And we want to continue to see the move of God spill on over into your lives and everyone around you. So anyway, thank you for joining us. God bless you.
that she's going to give an honest tithe. She's going to give what belongs to the Lord. Because the Lord is the, she knows that the Lord is the one that gave her everything. So she's going to pay her, her honest tithe. No matter what comes in, no matter how much finances come in, she's going to pay her honest tithe. Come on, Trish, now is the time that you continue to give. You continue to give what, it, what belongs to God because it is His. And He will continue to give to you. His promises are for you. Just keep giving. I encourage you to keep giving. Don't let this time make you feel like you have to hold on to something because you don't. Just give to the Lord who belongs to the Lord. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, my God, for what you are doing, Lord. You are building up givers. You are building us up, my Lord, to continue to give, my Lord. I heard someone recently say, I'm going to give my way out of, out of uh, debt. And that is faith, Lord. This is the time that you're building our faith, my God. So we thank you for that, my God. Increase, my Lord. And we know that we will not have, any, have anything that we do not desire because you are going to fulfill every single one of our needs, my God, because you are faithful. Continue moving, my Lord, because you're still moving. Even when we don't feel like you are moving, you are moving, my God. Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hey there, Powerhouse Church. Uh, thank you all for tuning in to our, our Facebook, YouTube service tonight. Uh, we just wanted to welcome you, and I pray that tonight's message uh, would bless you. You know, uh, also please leave a comment below if this is your first time with us, and we would like to welcome you to Powerhouse Church. If you need prayer, we're here to pray for you. If you need somebody to talk to, we are here. Uh, to, to pray with you, to talk with you, because uh, that's what we want to do, is be here for you, amen? Um, tonight, I would like to share something that God had laid on my heart, but something that I believe God has been showing me and dealing with me on and off, and I want to share that uh, tonight with you. I titled this message, The No Matter What Club. You know, as... I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but it was, a, it was a, about a soldier with Hacksaw Ridge. And as I was watching that movie, I, I was just really awed about how this soldier had kept to his faith. And he fought for what he believed in. And even though everybody uh, in, in his platoon came against him, mocked him, and, and, and just uh, came against him, it wasn't until when they went to war when the tables were going to be turned. Because during the war, and everybody was, there were people dying, people getting injured, he would go out there, because he was a, a medic, he would go out there, grab them, and save them. And he would pull them right there from the battlefield and drag them all the way to safety. And there were some that were mocking him, there were some that were against him, that he saved their lives. And you know, there was a part of that, that movie when I was watching it where he wasn't done. He kept on, like, I gotta go back. I, there, there's men out there that are dying. There's men out there that need help. I gotta go out there. And he would go out there even knowing that the enemy was coming uh, 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 closer and that they were gonna kill anybody that was alive. He put his life in front of these other men. And he dragged all these men. And you know, one of the things that I started looking at that was, no matter what, I'm going to go and I'm going to save those men. He had that attitude of, no matter what, this is my job. You know, when we receive Christ in our hearts, we put our trust in God and handed our own self into the hands of Jesus to, so that to do what He wants, with our lives, to use us any way that He saw fit. Our lives no longer was ours, but His. That no matter what happens from this point or that point that we gave our, our lives to Christ, we are to trust Him. Psalms 34, in verse 1, it says, I bless God every chance I get. My lungs expand with the praise. 
I live and breathe, God. If things aren't going well, hear this and be happy. Join me in spreading the news together. Let's get the word out. God met me more than halfway. He freed me from my anxious fears. When I was desperate, I called out and God got me out of a tight spot. God's angels set up a circle of protection around us while we pray. Open your mouth and taste. Open your eyes and see how good God is. Blessed are those who run to Him. Worship God if you want the best. Worship opens doors to all His goodness. God opened up a covenant with us that as a son or daughter of His, He wasn't going to give up on us or let us go. No matter what. Our mentality as a Christian should be as Job in 13 verse 15 says, Though he slay me, yet I will serve him. The first thing Job was seeing was that I will serve God even if life seems to be going against me. To serve God on the mountaintop is a good thing. But to serve God in the midst of the valley is a great thing. Because there's times where we could be on the mountaintop shouting and praising God. Everything's good. We'd be strutting it and everything. And then all of a sudden we go through the valley and there we are curled up in the corner crying. And, and they go, oh, what was me? What was this? What was God, what's going on? And we, we start complaining and whining. Uh, and that's not what God called us to do. It is easy to serve God when we are on the mountaintops. But true faith arises when it is tested. I will serve God, another thing, I will serve God with or without encouragement from others. You know, there's sometimes a need that we need a little bit of praise. You know, a little, come on, let's go, hey, hey, you can do it, hurrah, hurrah, you know. It's like having your own cheerleading section. You know, go, go, Steve, go, go, you know, and, and clap when everything's going, is, is going or, or whatever. You need that assurance in there when you walk with God. But sometimes we need to stand alone. There's times when we need to let the Holy Spirit take over and guide us. We got to stop trying to, to have somebody right there next to us to encourage us. It's good. Don't take me wrong. It's good. But there's times where, hey, I'm alone. There's nobody around. And the people that you do want to go with, you know, their, their mentality is totally different. But the mentality that we need is no matter what, I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to guide me, to co correct me, to comfort me in those times. There's times I don't need anybody. I just need God in my life. And I will serve Him even when I don't understand everything He is doing. Noah, not knowing why he was building an ark, built it by faith and trust. If you need to know why you're building your arts, you'll, ne you'll never build any. It is when you don't understand the plan and purpose that you build your greatest works for God. This is the no matter what club is all about. You know, I always check myself when I feel like giving up or I'm just like so tired of things and I'm just like, oh man, you know, I'm, I'm just tired, you know, I can't go on. I'm like James Brown, I can't go on, I can't go on, you know, it's like, you know, but he keeps going on, I don't know if you've ever seen James Brown, but man, that dude was bad at concert, you know, they would, he, you know, he was so tired because he gave his all, and you know, he, he'd be saying that, that was his chance, I can't go on, I can't go on, and then somebody would come out with a, a jacket, and then he would come out and put it on him, and he'd start doing his little dance, and then he'd throw it off, and, and you know, he'd get this more of a, uh, an excitement, you know, more uh, uh, things going on with him, and then all of a sudden he would, you start breaking down. Oh, I can't go on. That's oh, how I am sometimes. I can't go on, Lord. I can't go on, Lord. But you know what? God all of a sudden He says, All right, see, I ain't gonna put no jacket on you. I'm gonna put my arm around you. I wanna put my arm around you because I know you can. I know that that you have a calling. I know that you're better than what you're feeling right now. I didn't choose you just for anything. I chose you for a reason. I also feel like, where am I going to go? You ever feel like that? Like, okay, if, 
if I'm going to stop serving God, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? I think about that. I go, okay, so what I'm thinking is I want to go back to my sin. I want to do what I did before. I want to drink, get drunk, and in the morning I'd be right on the toilet throwing up. Yeah, that, that's something good to go back to. Or going back to, what did I do last night? What happened? Where's my car? You know, back in the day, I came home, I was all messed up. I couldn't find my car. I thought somebody had stolen it. And I'm like, where's my car? I was all frantic. Look at it. I had parked it down the street. And then I started walking back to my house. And I'm like, how did that get there? I didn't remember. Is that what I want to go back to? Do I want to spend my money on, 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 on things that are not going to help me out? I love what Peter says in John 6, 66. It says, after this, a lot of his disciples left. They no longer wanted to be associated with him. Then Jesus gave the twelve their chance. Do you also want to leave? And Peter replied, Master, to whom will we go? That's how I feel. Lord, to whom shall I go? You have all the words of, of real life, eternal life. We've already committed ourselves, confident that you are the Holy One of God. We serve the Holy One of God. We serve, there is no other. We hear songs, you know, when, when, uh, about Jesus that day. Nobody comes close to him. Every war he rages, he wins. We don't serve a dead God. We serve the alive God. We serve the King of Kings. Lord of Lords. You know, I, I was looking all like uh, tripping on that one day. How uh, you know there's a king, but yet even that king has to bow down to the King of Kings. But the president, even though he's the top dog, he still needs to bow down to Jesus. But it is this scripture that I'll remember that. Hey, see where are you going to go? Where's it, where, where's it going to take you? Where would I go? Back to my sinful life. A miserable life? To die in my sins? Work so hard to get where, where, where I'm at just to die in my sins? No. Because when I gave my life to Christ, when, I, when we gave our lives to Christ, we joined the no matter what club. We are in a club that no matter what, we're going to serve God. Whether it's going good, we're going to serve God. Whether it's going bad, we're going to serve God. No matter what. And that's our mentality should be. No matter what. There's a, a song that the Eagles have, Hotel California, that you probably heard. If not, uh, check it out. Because there's a part of that. A uh, song where it says, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. We can check out in our walk, but we will never be the same. We can check out, but no matter what, we can never leave the faith. Because with the covenant that God made with us, He will never leave us or forsake us, and He will always love us back to the place we belong. When I was backslidden, I always had the fear of God in me. That if I did something, something bad was going to happen. I had that fear. I did not live in peace all those years that, that I was backslidden. I did not live in peace. There was always something. There was either somebody coming up uh, to me and, and just sharing. Or there was some, uh, something I would see. Or a memorance. I remember passing by and these guys are, 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 are on a bullhorn. They're just going for it. And at first I'm like, ugh, these guys. But God has a way of kind of stopping you in your tracks. Because for some reason, that stoplight that I was at lasted a little bit longer than normal. And here's this guy preaching on a bullhorn right in front of my face. My radio could not go enough louder because God's word is a lot louder than anything. Because even if you can't hear it, it's going to go right through you. The Bible says it, it touches the bone, into the bone marrow. It, it's so powerful, and it was it was convicting me. And I I was like speed racer right when that light turned green. I took off right there, but 
My life is not the same. Your life will not be the same. It, it is something there that God places you. But, it, but it's also because of His love. Knowing that God loves me. That, he, he, that Steve, come back. There was always those words, Steve, come back. Steve, come back. And I could not get away from those words. I love you, son. I love you, son. And I, that's where I have learned that as I came back, God gave me another chance. God's also giving you another chance. Maybe you're backslidden. Maybe you don't even know the Lord. But God has given you a chance. He's given you a second chance. He gave me a second chance. And even though there's times of the, the ups and downs, I'm in a better place than I've ever been in my life. Knowing that I'm in His arms. There are four areas that I like to share to be a part of the No Matter What Club. And I believe the first one is our walk with God. That as we serve Him, that no matter what happens, we will trust Him with everything. And I do mean everything. Don't allow the enemy to distract you or take away your focus or come against you with lies. As Christians, we need to walk with integrity. Jesus said in John 10, 6, He said, But they had no idea what He was talking about. So He tried again. I'll be explicit then. I am the gate for the sheep. All those others are up to no good. Sheep stealers. Every one of them. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Anyone who goes through me will be cared for, will freely go in and out and find pasture. A thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. And I came so they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. I know that as in my walk, my life has become so much better. It's a life that I would never have dreamed of. Even if I would have made millions or whatever, I know that a lot of them would say, wow, I would love to have a mansion all that. But you know what? All that's going to go away. But my life, when I give my life to Jesus, it's eternal. I will live with Jesus eternally. Sometimes we don't give, we give the, uh, the enemy so much credit when problems arise. Let's be honest. It's sometimes us. The devil just, I look at him and he probably just kicks back, laughs when we are doing a, a good job of messing up ourselves. The second thing is our marriages. The enemy has had a field day with too many marriages. He has had a field day trying to destroy and separate marriages. And it is time that we stand up against the enemy and start fighting back. No matter what, we need to fight for our marriage. We need to pray for our spouse. Pray together. Have communication. Talk to one another. Listen to each other. Let God into your marriage. Don't let the enemy in. As my wife and I, you know, with, with things that come up in, in our marriage, we recognized some of the attacks that the enemy has come against us with. And a lot of times he snuck in some good ones. But we learn that as we pray together, we become stronger. As I started praying for my wife, her and whatever she's going through started changing. And in my life, God started showing me things. That's why it's so important to pray for one another. The enemy is there to, to just separate marriages. When God put both of us together, He didn't make any mistakes. When you put, when God, put, when you and your husband or your wife got together, it was not a mistake. Your partner is not the enemy. That's the love of your life. In Proverbs eighteen twenty two says, "Find a good spouse, and you find a good life, and even more, the favor of God." In Ecclesiastes it says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. 
And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. It's because God is in the middle of the marriage. In the midst. And that's where God needs to be in the middle of our marriage. Not on the outside. Not, not to the left or the right. But right in the middle. Another thing is our tithes. You know that no matter what, even if our income is low, we may be struggling in our finances, we should not forget the house of God. When we said we would trust God, it meant trusting God with everything, even our finances. Too many people right now are saying, I, I, I can't afford it. Basically, we cannot afford not to give. God is our provider. Not our jobs, not anybody else, but God is our provider. Pro Proverbs 3 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vessels will overflow with new wine. But our barns will be filled with plenty. God will provide. When we take care of the house of God, God in turn will provide for us. He will not leave us hanging. He will not just throw you to the side, okay, I'm done with you. You know, just like an unemployment check. Once your benefits run out, boom, you're done. God's not done. He continues. Another one is families. Through all this that's going on, I do believe families have been drawn together and they're closer. But we need to continue to pray for our families no matter what is going on. Good or bad, we need to lift up our families and as Christians, be that example. We need to be like Joshua 24, 15, where it says, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Period. For me and my house. And that means starting with us. Praying for everyone. Praying that even our lost ones are going to come to God. You see, we're not in this to be quitters. We are in it till the end. Either in death or when the rapture happens, we're ride or die. We're there to the end. And that the no matter what club is not a trend, it's a lifestyle. Why? Because Jesus never changes. We may change, but he doesn't. In Hebrews 13, 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Tonight, my friend, I just want to share what God did in my life when he, he gave me another chance. When He was there, when nobody else was, He was there. He gave me a second chance. And when I first got saved, I, I didn't think I was worthy, but He made me worthy. He saw something in me that says, I could use Steve. I could use him. And he sees each and every one of you and he says, I could use you. There's something in you that I can use if only you let me. God loves you. And tonight he wants to give you an opportunity of a lifetime. And this opportunity is to surrender your life, give it to him, and he will be there for you. He'll change some circumstances. He'll change your thinking. He'll take away those cravings. He will set you free. And I know that there's times where, where after being a Christian, problems are still there. Problems are going to be there whether you serve God or not. But now we have somebody to go to. Now I can go to God and say, Lord, I'm going through this. Lord, I, I, I need help. And he hears us. A lot of times we go to our friends. Hey, I need help. Hey, don't worry, bro. I got your back. I'll be right back. And he never return. But God will never turn his back on you. So tonight, I want to offer you this free invitation to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Also, if you're backslidden, it's not too late. Jesus loves you. No matter what you did, no matter what you think, maybe you feel, I, I've done too much. Well, let me tell you something. There ain't nothing that you've done that God won't forgive you for. Nothing. He already seen it. He knows what you're doing. He saw what you did. But he's still there with open arms, willing to 
set you free and forgive you. Some of us feel like we've done it a ditch so far that we can't get out. And let me tell you something, you probably can't. But my God has long arms. He'll reach down there into the pit and he'll pull you up. And he won't just pull you up and just leave you. He'll pull you up into his arms and he'll hug you and kiss you and tell you how much he loves you. He'll tell you, come follow me. Give me all your problems. Give me all your burdens. Because I am there and I'm going to take them from you. Friend, tonight I, I want you to repeat this prayer of God's ministry to you. It's a prayer of salvation. So tonight, if you mean it with all your heart, say this prayer. Father, forgive me. Forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me for having turned my back on you. I am so tired, Lord. I need you. And I need your help. I'm tired of doing it myself. And I can't go on. Come into my life, Jesus. Set me free. I want to have that peace and that joy that people talk about. I'm tired of doing it on my own. Come into my heart. Set me free. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. For from this day on, I will follow you. I will learn all I can about you. Because I want to hear those words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thank you for writing my name down in the book of life. In Jesus' name. You know, if you pray that prayer of salvation, there, there, there's a, a party going on right now in heaven. They're rejoicing, just like we're rejoicing. And we want to hear from you if you said that prayer. But no one thing, as a Christian, as we're continuing our walk, let's have that attitude of no matter what, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to continue to fight. I'm going to continue through the good, through the bad, the mountaintops or the valleys. No matter what, I'm here to serve God. Thank you. And I hope this message blessed you. Thank you. God bless you.
to bless God every family, every household. Begin to bless them tremendously upon this time. As they begin to sacrifice and seek your face. As they begin to lay down their needs, lay down their desires, God bless them. upon every place. We lift up the name of Jesus upon every individual. And God, we are believing that God, you are still moving. That you are still, God, doing your miracle works. And Lord, we honor you, we praise you, and we thank you, God, for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You guys, be blessed. We will see you Sunday. Hallelujah, what an amazing service that was. I hope you were blessed. And I also just want to say if you were if you're new to our channel, if you're new to this um, service, go ahead and comment new. And if you prayed that prayer of salvation, go ahead and comment prayer as well. And we want to welcome you to um to follow us on all our um social media uh outlets. Uh, YouTube and we're under Powerhouse Church OC and in our Instagram is Powerhouse Church underscore. You can also find us here at, um, on Facebook. So go ahead and, and, and be a part of the family. We want to welcome you. We want to make you feel at home and apart. So um, God bless you and thank you to everyone who joined us. We truly miss you and we look forward to the day where we can come together again. Until then, 